We make a lot of nonsense stuff. There we go. Part three. Take one. No many thousands of takes. Just watch if Jet's gonna come by. We can hope not. I mean, okay, figure it out. Yeah. So, part three. It's the gear video. It's the gear video. I've begrudgingly tried to push this off farther and farther and farther. UPS finally dropped off all this stuff though. And so. farther. I don't like doing gear videos. It's, it's preference. I mean, you can't tell people what to pack. You can show them what you pack. I have a lot of opinions about gear, and I know Diddles has a lot of opinions I about gear. I work in an outdoor gear store, so I like actually know what I'm talking about. This guy just like buys things because they look good. Pretty. Yeah, pretty. Uh -huh. Well, that's why we're hiking together. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. let's get into it. So our setup is a little bit different because we're hiking yeah. as a couple, so we're splitting a lot of gear. Obviously, we've got our big luxury uh, two-person sleeping bag. I love that this is our backdrop. So yeah, before we even get into any of this, Yep. First piece of gear is behind us. Now it's not the absolutely ultra lightest mat that you can buy, but mm -hmm. we decided that we wanted to be comfy instead of using those like mat couplers that hold your pads together and getting like a cold spot in the middle. I don't want. We just went for the double. Yeah, it makes the mornings better, makes the nights better. Um, you're not rolling on and off, or and even if you can make it like cohesive, I just want it to be it's, cuddly. Yeah, and it's more convenient than trying to like inflate two sleeping bag pads and like jam them in the tent. So that's what we're doing. And now we have a raft in case we have to ford rivers. I mean, I don't know how seaworthy this would be, but it's certainly an option. If we put a couple holes in it, then it's more river worthy. That's exactly how that works. That's what you do with all the gear. Yeah, just yeah. put some holes in it. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, we've also got our double sleeping quilt yes. from Z Packs. It's the 15 degree Fahrenheit or minus nine Celsius uh, mm -hmm. double quilt. So this guy. We've got some, it's gonna cinch right under the pad and keep us nice and toasty. I'm very excited for this. I don't think either, we haven't broken it in yet. No, we haven't even taken it out of the bag. We have not taken it out of the bag. We had this for the GDT. No shipping didn't work. We wanted we ordered this for, it for the, the GDT, GDT and it didn't get there. And then we didn't carry it on the VIT because we didn't want to get it dirty or... I don't think we even had it for the VIT. I think shipping has been an ongoing theme <laughs> in our life. It's been an issue. <laughs> And it's still an issue with, well, that's not this type of video. It got here now. It got here now. We have it. Is. it. Yes. It's Maiden voyage. It is quite chonky, though, so... I feel like we could get it smaller in a compression sack, though. Yeah, we're going to have to do some tweaks with how we pack our packs. I did bring along a couple of compression sacks in my duffel bag, so we can experiment with that later. But for now, our beautiful virgin double sleeping quilt. I'm excited. And I think with the dual, dual system, at least what we did last year... We didn't have the dual sleeping bag, but I carry this stuff. And I carry, carry the cooking system and, and the, the, the sleeping mat. Yeah. So that's why we can get away with having a little bit like heavier two-person gear too, is because like, sure, it's twice the weight of a single sleeping mat, but now I'm not carrying a tent. So yeah. that actually overall makes my pack lighter and we get to be extra comfy. Yes, we are overall lighter than hiking as individuals and it opens up room in the pack. We're not gonna have to do big food carries, but when on the GDT, like if we were hiking as an individual, we my, have to my, have all of this plus a lot of food. My yeah. whip snake would have been way past. Me. Remember that picture? It was took? massive. I was nonsense. I was walking down the road looking like I had just come out of God knows where. A stupid magazine. <laughs> I I don't know the name whip of the magazine. Snake. Yeah, whip snake. Whip snake magazine. Uh, yeah, yeah, we're trying to avoid that. So yeah, dual sleeping bag. Uh, and then the tent, this was an adventure. Mm -hmm. If you've tried to buy gear at all in the past, I don't know, year, yep. you'll know that um, COVID has made some manufacturing slowdowns in the tent industry. I'm guessing probably because like nylon fabric is used in the construction of masks. So there's not that much nylon fabric around. So stuff was out of stock. I have a whole spreadsheet deal that I can send you if you want. Not one, not one spreadsheet, multiple, multiple spreadsheets. Multiple spreadsheets. <laughs> And every single comment line on there pretty much is out of stock, out of stock, out of stock, back ordered. Oh, this one's in stock. Oh, no, it went out of stock while I was looking. She has them color coded as well. Um, it's I mean, quite we, intensive. If you're going to go there, you might as well make it pretty. So even this video and the food video, we're going to do full in-depth magpie videos because the fact that she can get into it so deeply without Constantine annoying her is something they would I I'm keeping it short this time, though. We won't have more peanut butter arguments. Oh, I know. I'm just saying overall, yeah. it's going to be yeah. nice to actually do those series, too. So this is actually our second choice tent. It's yes. the Big Agnes Tiger Wall UL2. Um, so it's a double wall tent, semi-freestanding, which essentially means all you have to do is, like, stake out two quarters of it in order to have a good solid pitch. 
I really, really wanted a Stratospire Li from the Tarte Tent, um, and it was in stock, and then I got all dithery about our choices. One day. One day. One day. Waited one day. Wait, waited one day. Think about it, because uh, they're like $650 American, which is like almost 900 Canadian, which is a lot to drop on a tent. Pricey. Uh, we decided we want to go for it, and then I went back on the website and they're out of stock. Yeah, and Big Agnes, with the tent game, shoot us an email. We gotta talk. We gotta talk a little okay. bit. Okay, it's not their fault it is that not... you were warned that the ultralight floor is very fragile and you need to use its ground print for it. It's not 100% your fault. We're not faulting here, but there's a the fine line between hyperlight. The these guys are light. very, very fragile. <laughs> you can see through it. So if you're an old school hiker and expect a piece of gear to be the complete durable set that I guess I'm a young guy, but an old school hiker, it's not that way anymore. When they say hyperlight, it well, means you have to Well, it's a trade-off. Put... The lighter it is, the less durable most of the time, unless you're wanting to invest a bunch of money, such as, I don't know, almost a thousand Canadian dollars on yes. a tent <laughs> to get something that's Dyneema, which is that perfect marriage of like, quite durable in terms of puncture resistance, but also very, very light. Yes. If you want to save a little bit of cash um, and you still want to get very lightweight, know that you're going to also have to carry a footprint. We don't actually have one with us. Um, we mm -hmm. are going to pick up a piece of Tyvek just to check on the ground underneath this guy. I uh, just haven't acquired that yet. Are we actually going to have to carry Tyvek? I, I think so. Big Agnes. It's okay. <laughs> Two years ago it shipped. I'll okay. carry it. We'll survive. Okay. We can move from the tent. So that's the tent. It's a dual dual system, sleep system, sleep system. Sleep system right here. So yeah. that's our shared gear, the stuff that, we, that we're splitting between us. The other thing that we're sharing is I've got this 1.2 liter Sea to Summit Alpha Pot. Um, so that's enough capacity to be able to boil water and then split the water between the two of us. Yeah. So uh, we're only bringing one stove, one can of fuel, um, and that, and one pot. Well, he's... Carrying. I don't know where my pot... My pot is... I have it. Oh. Yeah, I brought it for you from home. My other pot, the brand new one I got this year, is in a trash can in Florida because the ants... I could not deal with it. I could not... I could not cook. I, I could not cook in Florida. The ants swarmed me so bad that... Uh-uh. No more. Were you thinking about this pot? Aha! My old paint can pot. Yep. This pot was... Yeah, an old paint can from the AT, actually. Yep. It survived all the trails and one handle. I don't know where the other handle went. But yeah, we will be cooking on this full trail as well. So, um, the benefits of cooking, I mean, if you're going as a dual partnership, it's nice to have them together at the end of the day. And I also um, really prefer cooking because it spans kind of the range of meals that you can eat. So, if you're just eating cold snacks all day and like tortillas and jerky and all that, it's not exactly what you want to eat for dinner. And it's also like easier to get those calories into you once you've got that warm meal at the end of the day. Yeah, and 4,600 miles, I don't want to be shoving spam in my face for that long. Like, spam's great, but spam's I don't want great. to be shoving that in my face it's for It's not the months. basis of a balanced breakfast. Or dinner. Or dinner. Or lunch. I it's mean, just not a basis of a balanced meal. No, yeah. but, uh, and I mean, for 4,600 miles, like, we want to treat ourselves. We're going to have to, like, keep in mind the mental toughness and like the mental caretaking that we'll have to do to maintain our positive attitudes mm -hmm. as well as like the physical aspect of nourishing our bodies and like having the right gear that's not too heavy to carry so yeah it'll be a good blend i mean over the span of this trail the miles aren't easy but we don't we won't have to be night hiking a lot of the time oh well i like night hiking but we don't have to uh, but we, we don't have to so like if we do a morning of dark hiking night hiking and then get to camp at six or seven, we can still put in 30 to 35 miles because it's not yeah. It's not big obstacles that are stopping us. It's just time moving. So we'll have time to cook and that's gonna be super cool. Cool. Um, got going. some rope, which is obviously just like a key safety item to have along. Also just for bear hangs, we are gonna be not going through grizzly territory, but we're gonna be going through some pretty intense black bear territory, especially kind of in the boundary waters. And in Upper Michigan, the bears there like don't really know what people are, so they're not really scared of you. I have a feeling you're gonna use that rope to tie me to a tree. You okay. just gonna leave me in Wisconsin? <laughs> tie me to a fence post Where with the cat with from, the cows? <laughs> anyway, it's okay. I'll I'll handle the death by cow. It's okay. I'll I'll handle it. I'm glad you. I know it's I know fate. it's I know it's coming. So bear just hang pick rope. Pick the cute cows, please. Obviously, pick you've got to get about pasture. ten meters or thirty <laughs> feet of rope for bear hangs. I've also got this is paracord, so you can exactly. actually pick it apart and use it as fire starter fishing line. It's made out of different 
um, entwined strengths of thread inside. So that's actually like a cool survival tip. I'm sure you can find a bunch of hunting dudes talking about the many uses of paracord on other channels. It's overkill. That could wrap around me ten times. You only need to wrap around me twice. I mean, I won't walk away from the cow pen. You can leave me there without tying me to the cow pen. It's funny that you love cows so much because you're scared of big animals. I'm somewhat scared of cows, but I still love yeah, them. Yeah, you don't want to like get too. You don't want to touch them, but you just love them. I would touch them if it wasn't inappro inappropriate to the animal as well as the farmer and the private property. So I would go give them a hug. If this I video's get... gonna get demonetized if you keep talking about cows. Yeah, I guess so. Okay. <laughs> Moving on, what's oh, in your bags over there, baby? Moving on? Moving on. <laughs> okay. What's in your bags? So, yeah, this gear, set up, as she said, kind of the same old, same old. Not the same old, same old. It's all brand new. It's all brand new. It's <laughs> same for part. You know what's we're, up, we're anyway. Serious. So, me, uh, food bag, it's just a pod. We're not going to go through the food again. You can fit four or five days, six days, seven days pushing it. That's on my diet as well. Um, and then... I don't know how we want to handle the clothes because I can take out every single item of clothing. I mean, people know what you wear. You wear it every day, every video. Yeah, that's true. One thing that I left out for y'all is two pair of gloves. Um, I'm not getting fooled again. I'm not getting bamboozled again. My hands get ice, ice cold. Um, that was the big thing on the GDT is I think I got lasting damage in my extremities. Yeah, we and... didn't have the right gloves set up for that. Um, we picked up these guys from my Where work. Where are section. those? I thought you said you had them. I thought I did too. Well, these are my pair of smart wool uh, insulated gloves. So they're actually like essentially down filled. They've got like a synthetic down alternative in them. Oh my God, I forgot I had and those And they gloves. are windproof, water resistant. Uh, and also I, they're not like technically advertised as being touchscreen, but they work okay. So these guys are a lot warmer and more practical. If you don't have something a little bit more heavy duty like these, then two pairs of gloves is a smart choice. I had those. And then I don't know where they went this year. We can figure it out. Oh, uh, it's somewhere. Um, so yeah, the food pod, he uses a pod. I use this thing, it's called a lunchbox. I believe it's from Superior Wilderness Designs. Yes, it is. Mm -hmm. So that's actually a Wisconsin-based company. They're there based we go. on uh, Lake Superior, I think. There we go. They got a picture of Lake Superior on the label. <laughs> um, I really like this guy, it's Dyneema, and I really like that it's square. I like the squareness of that too. Because it like slides exactly right into my pack. It's yeah. designed to fit into one of their packs, but it also like fits in most packs because most packs are roughly the same shape. And you can actually dig into it without moving it. If you try to dig into this, it's gonna you're gonna have to repack it. Like, yeah. You can dig into that without having to take stuff and out. And it's white, so you can actually see what it is that you're looking at. If you're using a dark food bag, it's yeah. like you gotta rustle around in there, you can't see. But yeah, it's really great. It's just one of those examples of where like a really smart, well-considered design choice makes a big difference. Even though you would think that just using any old stuff sack for your food would be fine, and it is, this is much better and it adds to like your enjoyment and experience of the trail just by giving you that little bit of convenience. It's amazing how little things can add to the enjoyment. Yeah. Like a food bag, you don't think about it adding to it, but like... But a well-structured food bag can really yeah, make your day. It makes my pack easier to pack so you don't have this weird cylindrical object in the yeah. middle. Yeah. It's frustrating. I thought this was going to be this, but it's not that. I felt really silly when I paid like 35 bucks for like mm -hmm. a Dyneema food bag, but actually it's worth every penny. So uh, this stuff is dual gear. But if we hike long enough together, don't tell her, this might be this, this might get swapped there. I might just start migrating Diddle's gear over here, Magpie gear over here. Thanks. <laughs> um, yeah. Wait, did you hear that? What? You heard what I said? You heard that I was going to move the gear over here? I mean, you can, did, you, you, you you can try. Uh-huh. You think you're sneaky? Oh, I do. I don't know if you're sneaky or not. Oh, we're sharing a tent. Yeah. I guarantee I can start packing, but you'll hear me rustling. You wake up when I midnight munch, too. <sighs> I'll figure out a way. Mm -hmm. I don't think I will. But yes, <laughs> I get distracted. Yes, you do. Uh, moving on to, I guess, clothing. If we yeah. want to just briefly mention it, this is actually the shirt that I'm going to demo for the first part of the hike. Um, obviously, shorts and pants. 11 skies all the way. Um, my pants yes. are also on the way, so you get guys will get to have a look at the yes. pants version of the shorts the, as soon as I get them in the mail. Yeah, we'll, we'll show them on the camera. The pants have toggles along here that you can cinch down. Um, don't foresee a lot of snowpack. 
Got I'm just a pants kind of person, and She's we're going to be going through tick country, so yes. I like the idea of having pants with a cinch at the bottom, and they've got the like practical pocket situation going on. Got the good trash pocket, got the good zipper pockets up front, got the expandable waistband. You I know what it's about. I accidentally even color coordinated, so there we go. Fashion. Ooh, fashion, fashion. Um, this is actually like a men's sun hoodie from uh, Outdoor Research, because for some reason, are you listening to me, Outdoor Industry? Stop putting weird pockets right where my pack would gonna fit. <laughs> Oh my god, why? The men's ones all just like straight ahead, no frills, just a hoodie. You know, it's got like little thummy holes, which is Ooh, nice like when you're holding holes. your trekking poles. Women's drawstrings, uh -huh. key pockets. You gotta be fashionable. Lots of bullshit. You gotta be fashionable. I only wish that the men's one had a ponytail port, but of course they don't. Oh, I like the ponytail. On the men's one. Well, we can make that. Yeah, I think this is something that, uh, this is something that we may develop further. So you're still not in my theorized version of how to hike with shirts. He keeps trying to convince me to hike topless. It would make us go faster down the trail. Yeah, because he'd be trying to catch up with me to get a look the whole time. Oh, that makes me sound bad. <laughs> I mean, that's the rationale, though. No, I just think it's better on the environment. I think it's better for the body. I think it's better better for the communities we pass through. I think it's better for the nutrition. The What was the word I used the last time? The nutrients? The nutrients. I don't know. I don't even remember. The Nut nutrients. Nutriation. Nutriation. It's better for the nutrition. You get that vitamin D upon the body. I mean, I go no shirt, no problem all the time. Okay. Um, so, yeah, this guy is a <laughs> UPF 50 solar shirt. So, because we're going to be going through a bunch of different environments and different seasons on this trail, we're going to start in a shoulder season, hike through the hottest part of the summer in the Midwest. It's going to be brutal. And then we're going to be finishing up in the Midwest in yeah. October. So, it's going to get quite cold. Um, I brought a little bit more clothing than I otherwise would have just because we're going to need to be prepared for a bunch of different scenarios. Oh, so yeah. this is my summer wear. Constantine, of course, you know what he wears. This is winter wear. Winter wear, his, his uh, synthetic thermal layer. I can pull it out real quick too. I did want to give a shout out to Buck and Steady. He's, we were talking this morning and you were telling me about the joys of a Midwest summer. It's going to be absolutely brutal. I'm from Winnipeg, so I already know. Yeah, I, so, oh, I didn't tell you this yet. Mm. So during the conversation, I might have found a goal for this summer. Oh, yeah? Mm -hmm. So when we hit the the apex of the tick season, the apex of the mosquito season, the apex of the black fly, black fly season, go a full day on Hike Naked Day. Hike naked through it. Ooh. To test the mentality. To Hike see Naked Day is in the middle of black fly season. June 21st. To oh, see gosh. if I can push that mentality and just meditate away the amount of swelling my body's gonna do. Have you but ever in had a, a black fly bite? Mm -hmm. It hurts bad. But in one way it's good depending on the swelling area. <laughs> it hurts bad. No <laughs> It do hurts this. bad. Goal found. <laughs> Goal. I told Buck this morning it was a 51-49 split. I went 50-50 and then knowing my mind I gave that extra percent because I'm starting to lean to it. We'll find out what that's like. Yeah. On that note, I also have packed a mosquito head net in here. Very, 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 very important to your everyday enjoyment of the trail. I love mosquito head nets. I was devastated when I lost mine. <laughs> you were so In the Jack Pine Swamp. The <laughs> buggiest so place in the GBT. I was so mad. You were not happy. So, I've packed myself. Luckily there was a store 200 head. miles away we could have lost. <laughs> yeah. Uh -oh. Um... Yeah, I can go through it. I think if we I think just we both, like touched uh, on the clothing pretty well. I've never done this, so I was just gonna run through quickly piece by piece with the clothing. Like, well, we, got your, we both got like merino top and base layer. We both got warm hats. I've got a neck tube. We've got gloves. I'm gonna do it real quick. Okay. Right. You ready? Yeah. Okay. Speed run. Speed go. run. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I actually can do this fast. Thermals, long johns, um, nut huggers, whatever you want to call them. Those are just cheap waffle weaves from like Target or something. America, I'm not going to tell you what this is actually about, but it's a bandana. Um, you guys can guess. Well, we'll be coming out with something in 11 Skies future down, down the line. This is a Most to important too. piece of gear I oh. probably have in the world. A lot of the hikers I hike with know what this means. Can't give away too much yet. Yes, okay, bandana. Um, haven't worn this in four years. But I still carry it because it's been on every trail. You should. I it's mean, if you've seen his trail. AT videos, you know exactly what aesthetic this is going for. I didn't take this off for two or three months after I got back from the AT. I was that weird. Okay, <laughs> we'll continue it's on. It's like meth dealer chic. <laughs> okay, Balcava, <laughs> second favorite piece of gear. Gets the mouth all nice and toasty, and the head toasty. And I don't carry 
beanies or anything. This is just perfect. Wraps completely around the face. I'm tempted to wear it right now. I mean, you do love that thing. I'm not gonna put it on. Um, speed round, still going. Two pairs of socks. I think there's two more in here. Oh, fuck. I didn't know I was doing this. Two buffs? That's four buffs at this point. I think we may want to eliminate some of that extra. Yeah. Baby buff. This is actually good for shin splints. Um, oh, yeah. I've got an ultra-branded baby buff that I really like, too. Yeah. You can prop it on your heel or the bottom of your foot if you're having arch problems. A baby buff is actually can fix a lot of... It's like a med kit. It's, yeah. like, it's like duct tape, but better for a lot of They're stretchy enough problems. that they provide like a little bit of support, but they're also like not so big that you've got a big lump of fabric around yeah. your knee. They're also really nice if your ears are getting sunburnt. You can just like pop it on there and they're so thin that it just kind of provides a little bit of shade. I mean, hopefully I won't need to do that because I've got my lovely solar UPF hood, but Ooh. yeah. Buffs. But it doesn't have a ponytail cord. Come on, I've got retailers. <laughs> Get your shit together. Buffs yeah. are impressively versatile. I mean, these things are some of the most important pieces of gear I use. Like yeah. this, the reason I forgot I had this was on the Florida Trail the first 10 days, my knee started swelling up like a balloon and I made a makeshift kind of knee brace with this and it let me continue hiking. Yeah. Like you can do a lot of stuff with buffs, so that's a separate video. Um, Haven't worn this in a while because it's been cold as balls all the time. Just a classic hiking shirt. Is that still the same one from the PNT? Uh-huh. Wow. It's not no. even shredded no, or anything. None of the bright green was from the PNT. I don't know when I got this. Huh. See, gear appears in my bag. <laughs> I put gear in his bag. I just sneak it in there. You will uh, never know. Drawers that are inside out and that probably smell great. Thanks for that. Uh-huh. Love it. Drawers. Again, sax drawers. Oh, the piece de resistance. Shreddy baby. Uh, look at the holes. It's delicious. Look at the holes. I love it so much. Thermal. No pair of socks. Another pair of drawers and another thermal. I've been going thermal heavy. A nice new thermal for you to replace your shredded one. It is a new thermal. I'm carrying three thermals because I've been scared too much with cold and I've been frozen. So my clothes bag is not an ultralight clothes yeah, bag. Yeah, so much for ultralight, I was going to say. Yeah. But that's my clothes bag. Yeah, mine looks big and chunky just because I've got a bunch of like other clothes in here at the moment because I brought my pack on the airplane with me. But mm -hmm. basically, I've got three pairs of darn tough socks. A merino bottom, merino top, and head net gloves. One merino buff, one baby buff, and a tooth. Wow. Why did I have more? I don't know. I don't pack smart. Because do you don't I? throw anything away. Uh -huh. You just get emotionally attached. That America buff, it, I can't, I can't, I, I can't not hike get rid with of the it. America buff. I have to hike with it, and I haven't worn it in so long. Oh, knock yourself out, babe. And I'm carrying too many socks. Florida Trail, you pack your fears, and Florida Trail scurred me on wetness. Tamar Canada Trail scared me on coldness. I'm just a scaredy baby. You're just a scaredy boy. Just a scaredy baby. Oh well. <laughs> okay, clothes. I know gearheads are gonna hate that I went through that so quick, but that's that. I'm pushing that out of the way. All right, moving down to jackets. Oh. He also has more than me. He's got his own <laughs> little wind fleece down here. Wind jacket, no fleece. Wind jacket down there. 20 uh, bucks at REI. Nice. Yeah. Oh yeah, it was from like the kids section or something, wasn't it? I'm not a kid's size. Oh. No, like boys like boys double XL sometimes can be the same size. Bad boys kind of club small. for life is what she's trying to say. I actually wear a lot of stuff out of the kids section. My, my thermal layer that's in here is actually like a boys double XL because it fits the same as like kind of in between like a men's X small or a men's small. So if you're like a slimmer hiker or shorter or a woman, but you don't want to like wear the frilly girly shit, boy section, man. And the stuff that you can get like from some retailers, especially Icebreaker is just as good as the adult sizes, but it's way cheaper. And in Canada, you don't pay a provincial sales tax on it. She was telling me about that the other day. That is good. Yeah, we're doing everything better, except yeah. combos. Uh, oh yeah, we have to fight again. Cut. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so he's got his little wind jacket. Mm -hmm. You got your Arcteryx Cerium uh, LT puffy. A lot of holes. It's not that bad. The rain jacket. The rain jacket. That's not an LT. Oh, see, I don't. <laughs> I got. I got a I warm. Believe... I got a warm layer and a rain jacket. I believe this is the uh, Arcteryx Beta SL hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not totally sure because like the packaging is rubbed off, but I think it's a Beta SL. Um, which is a really nice jacket. It's about nine ounces as opposed to the Helium 2, which is what I carry, the Outdoor Research one. That said, that's legit Gore-Tex. The one that I carry is 
definitely not and it does like wet through so if you want to carry like an extra I think it's an extra like four ounces um, the, the the Arc'teryx or another like ultralight Gore-Tex option like that is better I often wish that I did have a better rain jacket I just can't be bothered to spend five hundred dollars on a rain jacket at this point in my life oh I'm still stuck on the word beta am I not alpha you don't need the alpha jacket is there actually an alpha jacket? Yeah, there I is. I was going for a joke. It's jo like I a was mountaineering going for, jacket. I was going for a joke. You don't need a mountaineering jacket. You're not going to let me get away with that joke, are you? No, I'm not. You're not? Oh, mm -mm. am I just beta? No, you're Syria MLT. You're not going to give me what I want here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to buy the alpha jacket to become alpha. You know, it's like $1,000. Am I just beta? I'm not doing that joke with you. <laughs> anyway. Oh no. I finally have acquired an item of gear that I've been lusting after for some years but couldn't justify buying because my previous down puppy was in good enough shape. It's dead. My old down puppy is dead. It exploded. There was feathers everywhere. Not a big fan of that situation. It had nothing left in it. No, it was done. It was so, like wearing a t-shirt. Yeah. I, uh, I splurged. I got myself the much lauded Hiker fashion, you know, cool kid jacket, the Ghost Whisperer Ooh, UL2. I do like the Ghost Whisperer. I did think about going for the 1000 Phil Power Down, but um, decided I'm not that Patagucci, so I went for the regular <laughs> Ghost Whisperer. We're going to switch puppies again because then she'll go into the joke, get into the joke of beta. <laughs> she really doesn't like that joke. This is one of the best <laughs> down jackets that you can get that's like purpose built for through hiking and one of the originals. So I'm pretty stoked that I finally have this like iconic piece of gear. Another gripe with the outdoor industry is that they don't make sizes for slender women. Huh. So I had to go with the men's small because the women's extra small, which should be the size I am according to the size chart, the arms are too short, the shoulders are too narrow, and the waist was still too wide and it like came down to my belly button. What the hell, outdoor research? That sounds Women awesome. have broad shoulders. Not great. That so sounds cool. The men's small is a little bit too big on me, but it's better to have a puppy. It's a little bit too fluffy than a puppy that doesn't come all the way down to your hips. I still can't get over the beta. Okay. Oh. You want me to keep going? No. Okay, so... <laughs> um, obviously, we're both going to be wearing ultras. Oh, I want to get away from those, too. I don't know, I tried out a different brand of shoes last year and they didn't work for me because they had less cushioning under the ball of the foot and it ended up giving me really bad fire foot when I was walking a lot on pavement. So Ew. at least for me, for a trail that's got this much road walking on it, I don't want to try anything new yeah. because road walking is really the one thing that's going to prove your shoes metal in terms of how much it protects your feet. When you're walking on a softer trail, you can kind of get away with a shoe that maybe doesn't feel as good or doesn't have as much cushion underneath it. So and Ultras, the rock plate too. yeah, and the rock plate. Like Ultra still remains the best zero drop option that still and has a lot of cushion that we've tested. That we've tested. We haven't tried the Hoka's, which I'm curious about. I don't think Hoka's would be better. There has to be something better out there than Ultra, and the 5.0, the 4.0, the 3.0. It seems when they have round numbers with their models, they break down easier. So the 2.5 has been better than the two. 3.5 has been better than the 3, 4.5 has been way better than the 4, haven't tried the 5, but it seems like when they up their models that f something gets lost in that translation, and it might be because they're tweaking it way too much or something, but the half model seems better. See, my perfect ultra is the ultra 4. I still like the wow. 4.5, I don't see a huge difference between the 4.5 and the 4, That's I haven't my tried least the 5 favorite yet ultra. either. I think it really depends on your walking style too and how hard you are on your gear, because I find that mm. ultras, pair of ultras last me twice as long as the same pair of Altria lasts him I've on the same ultras. terrain. Lasts me 1,200 miles. But that's yeah. pushing it to the very brink. Yeah, no, I mean, mine generally lasts twice as long as yours, and I think part of it is just that our natural gates are different. Do you like the 4.0s? I do like the 4.0s. That was my least favorite model I ever. still like the 4.5s. This is why I don't talk gear at all, because there's so much preference. preference. Y'all want gear videos, but it's like, I can tell you what works for me, she can tell you what works for her, we can tell you what works for both of us. Gear is gear, you gotta find what works for you. Um, so we can begrudgingly continue down this gear hole that, ugh. Well, I'll tell you there is one thing that does work for both of us, it's the Sawyer Squeeze filter. Nope, I haven't filtered water since Florida. Nasty. Mm -hmm. Gross. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Uh-uh. You can, she can sometimes feel it in the atmosphere when 
my body says I haven't filtered water. Yeah, there's a certain <laughs> sense that allows you to, to, uh, to be aware of what's going on with the atmospheric composition. Would you say that sense is a beta sense or an alpha sense? I'm just curious. I'm trying to think of another Greek letter and I'm drawing a blank. I know, so you just might have to go with what the gut feeling is. Anyway, Sawyer. Oh! Um, <laughs> one of the things that I discovered that makes using a Sawyer squeeze filter like really, really good is the Seenock Outdoors water bladder, which are designed specifically to work with this style of filter. Although on the Seenock website, they recommend using um, a different... It's actually pronounced Canuck. Is it? Yeah. I, I listened to an interview with the founders of that. And it's and Canuck. It's actually Canuck for some reason. It's kind of more fun to say than I think Sinoc. it's a French word. No, it's an abbreviation, baby. It might be an abbreviation of a French word. I don't listen to podcasts well. <laughs> um, it, I, I do remember it's actually pronounced Canuck, though. Well, all right. The Canuck uh, water bladder bag. One of the really nice things about this guy is that, that it's so nasty. Well, it's kind of sandy, but... <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's got sand. sand all over the sleeping bag. It's going to get sandy anyhow. You can completely open the back of it, and after I clean it, it'll be very easy to open. Was that last seen on the Vancouver Island Trail? Yes, it was. This is oh. big sand. Uh, and actually just like scoop into a shallow water source. Do you remember our last water source like that? Yeah, it was fucking The gross. nasty smelling one that we camped by? Oh, so good. All right, as she closes that up, I will quickly, also begrudgingly, go through... This is the only other bag I carry, electronics bag, miscellaneous bag. Um, let's see how fast I can go through this. Oh, I really need to clean that. Yes. Um, what, one quick thing, they actually recommend, and I actually kind of want to try this out if I can get my hands on one, using the um, VersaFlow uh, from HydroBlue filter on these guys. And I'm really intrigued by it. So if you guys have ever tried it out, let me know. Because the reviews say that it's like even a little bit nicer and more convenient to use than the Sawyer. And I definitely am game to give it a try if I can find one. So let me know. Get your heads. Yeah. So chargers, spare pair of headphones, charging brick that you plug into the wall. Very straightforward. iPhone and then also brick. Um, brick, said brick, 26,800 milliamps. Yeah. Can charge the phone. Milliamp hours, baby. Seven or eight times. Milliamp yep. hours. MAH. Now here's something funny. Oh, let's not talk about this. This little guy is also 26,800 milliamp hours. Nonsense. It's not only half the size. This boy, the way that he shops, he was like, that looks good, and just bought it. That one actually has a higher wattage capacity, so it can charge a laptop because it can push out power much faster, which is why it's heavier and more reinforced. It's like a brick. You can get lighter weight ones that'll still charge your phone seven or eight times. That's the only time I got frustrated with my own stubborn not gearhead. That's the only time I've been envious of gearheads. Yeah, you just gotta scroll down to the specs and look at the weight. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and mine was cheaper too. His has a hundred and thirty dollars. Mine was thirty. Would you say an alpha or a beta carries a heavier, heavier version? Oh, definitely a beta. What? <laughs> <laughs> God. Okay, it's not working. Um, headlamp. It's a headlamp. Exact same um, model. It shines light we around the, the dark. I actually have upgraded mine. I upgraded my headlamp this year because I was tired of my like old black diamond storm, which was like constantly breaking. Ah, why did you do that? Oh, I wasn't trying to hit the eyes. Well, I was trying to give it. I was trying to give it. I was trying to give a ghoulish appearance. Yes. It's, it's too bright. I can't <laughs> do that. Uh, I've actually upgraded mine with the Petzl Core, which is a really cool thing that you can do from this brand specifically. Is that they're dual fuel compatible, and so this core can go into almost any Petzl headlamp. You can also pop it out and power this headlight it's with three AAA batteries. Yeah, so I can either recharge it from my brick, or if my brick is low on power, I can also just put some spare batteries in there. And I do carry spare batteries in my repair kit, which is just found in here. Um, I keep all my little bits and pieces in the same bag as my charger. And I just call it my bedtime bag because I carry, you know, uh, the medication that I take in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> toothbrush, you know, any little bits and pieces like spare hair ties, all that just lives in here, as well as a journal and a pen. Alright, next thing in the good, good grab bag, wallet. It's a wallet. <laughs> it's a lightweight wallet made of reusable plastic. Find yourself one. I no. got the same thing made out of Dyneema because I'm a fancy bitch. Yeah, Dyneema is fancy. <laughs> I think this is just plastic. One more thing down. Teepee? Did you bring teepee? She did bring well, I am Wow, you are fancy, huh? Of me being fancy. 
Uh, I'm not a TP fan. I'm a baby wipes all the way kind of person. That is super fancy. Uh huh. So uh, this, if you got chafe, this is like rubbing straight sandpaper into some very unfortunate places. Whereas this is like being massaged by an angel. Like a golden fleece around a swaddle around a seven pound eight ounce baby Jesus. Exactly. Yeah. So in my hygiene bag, I've got titanium trowel spare is a black bag to put my used uh baby wipes in there because obviously you don't want to bury those they're not biodegradable and number one first aid hack i'm trying out a new brand of this but usually people will use um the diaper ointment called desitin extra strength desitin is the way to go the only problem with it is that it comes in these massive tubes so you got to put it into a little one you could just put a bag of it just squeeze it into a bag and i've seen like, people do the icing bag technique but um, uh, I'm trying out a different brand, but it's the same stuff. It's just zinc oxide diaper rash cream. Because yeah. if you think about it, chafe is really the same thing as diaper rash. It's moisture and friction irritating a sensitive area. So just treat your butt like a baby. And I keep it in my hygiene pack because then it is there for me when I conveniently already have my pants off. Ooh. Gonna skim over a few jokes. And... <laughs> okay. Uh, I wanted to do it again, but it wouldn't have worked well there. Um, I used anti-monkey butt chafe powder for the AT and the PCT. It didn't work in any type of way. I don't no. know, shameless plug here, haven't gotten chafe since wearing Levin Sky's shorts. Feel shameless plug, but it's actually true. Not, yeah, okay, whatever. Um, but chafe is the worst thing in the world that I can actually imagine. Monkey it's so, so bad. painful. So, got on a tangent to TP. Now this guy doesn't even carry a trowel, which I find is ridiculous. I use trek and pole tips, which we'll go into as well. Which is well. not proper LNT technique, and we do not endorse. He is doing it wrong. If you get the same depth into the hole, it's fine. If you get six inches into the ground with a trek and pole tip and the heel of your foot, the heel of your foot can dig the same width as a shovel. I think uh, it's worth it to spend the money on the titanium trowel. Yes. We agree to disagree. Yes, we do. Headphones, brand new. Um, I carry two headphones because I've had them crap out on me all the time and smart well and he's got the Much apple again. without uh like that you can't plug a regular set of headphones into yes. i uh, remain devoted to my five-year-old cell phone because it still has a headphone port so yes. i can buy headphones any gas forever station. at any gas station walmart's big chain stores yep yeah and we're getting close to the end oh i got a surprise in here random plastic bag just because always good to have an extra tent splint don't know why I carried it. I think I forgot about this in my bag the entire trail. Let's because... just not carry that because we don't need it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't need. And then a patch that I'm going to ask Magpie to sew onto the bag. Oh, really? Yes. What is it? It is your patches in here. That's my patch. <laughs> she thought that was a surprise for her. We can actually get the surprise for Magpie, too. For the trail. No, it's behind the floor of the trail. Haha. <laughs> Aww. Uh-huh. You guys see that? Hiking America, Magpie, Eleven Skies. She's perched on top of the mountains where you'll find Magpie in her natural habitat. That's really cute. Mm -hmm. Aw, thanks, baby. Yeah? Yeah. You like? I do like. Good. Who's Alpha and who's Beta? I'm Alpha, obviously. I didn't word the question right. I know you're Alpha, but... <laughs> <laughs> Can I be called Alpha with the Alpha jacket just one time? You have a Beta jacket, though. Can I just be called Alpha with the Alpha jacket one time? When you buy an Alpha jacket, sure. Oh, even with a present? Oh. I mean, I'm even indulging the question. That's the present. That's true. We're going to have hours of conversation off the camera. We're going to have tears off the camera. No, we're not. We're going to have a few tears. Big boys don't cry. Big alphas don't cry? It's true. <laughs> bag gone. That's, um, that's the random bag. So that's kind of it for my gear as in what I pack in the pack, I think. And yeah, I think that's yeah, what, that's, that's pretty besides, much it for you. Besides toothpaste, you can see it front right of your screen. Toothpaste and toothbrush, very straightforward. This is supposed to be a shoulder packet, pocket packet attached to the pack, but I've had three HMG shoulder straps, and this part always breaks. So if you've seen my videos, I just put it in between my chest strap, which is super uncomfortable. I'm gonna also ask Magpie. If she stitched it, if this she could help stitch it's this as well. It's dynamic. You can't sew it. I got string. I did a like jury rig of string. So we're gonna play with this. We're gonna figure something else out because these guys are just so unreliable. Even though they're supposed to be waterproof, the zippers break in about five minutes. Yes. 
So not to not to shit on Hyperlite. Hyperlite makes great stuff. That's not one of their successes. Let's no, say. No, love Hyperlite. Hyperlite makes great stuff. I'm not shitting on them. Um, hmm. We're not shitting on Big Agnes either. <laughs> not okay, Big Agnes. If you guys see this too, not shitting on you guys. I do have a little frustration with how I use your gear. I guess. I that begrudgingly, seems fair. I begrudgingly admit it's that as user. well. But it was like putting it on grass and it would pop. Getting too stuck into it. I think that's everything that goes in my bag. I don't know why you use actually a dry bag instead of just like another Ziploc bag for all that stuff. It would be a little bit more useful. I'm well. a young hiker, but I'm an old timey hiker at heart. I don't like change, changing the ways. And that's why I know this guy's gonna change his gear too. Doesn't change gear. I hate, 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 hate. This is why I have to sneak you into his pack. Like he's a kid and I'm putting cauliflower <laughs> in his macaroni. I can't stand eat, eat changing vegetables. gear so much it bothers me oh i think that's everything in my pack i think so um i've got a couple other items that we yes. didn't go through i mean let's see i always bring the sawyer plunger with me uh it's very lightweight also it'll just like save you a bunch of time and frustration just being able to clean your filter in the wild some of the reason i'm curious about the versaflow is because apparently you can back flush it using clean water from another water bottle so maybe uh, I might be checking this guy out. That's if you filter your water. And I'm also looking at the jar of salsa thinking it's getting warm, but we will be able to eat it after the video. You're getting bored, huh? No, 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 not at all. Let's go. All right. Um, little pocket knife. She this guy doesn't even of... carry a knife, but I just carry the like classic. I do have a knife. $20 Victorinox. Um, I lost a toothpick a long time ago. Essentially all I ever use it for is like cutting cheese. I don't have a knife. Or salami or whatever. Um, and then this is the key for cutting your toenails. Um, and that just lives in my hip belt pocket alongside a very basic compass. Useful if your phone dies or you need to set a bearing to get your way through a bushwhack. Also just like a really good thing to keep on hand. Um, this solid sunscreen. If you're a long sleeves, long pants hiker like me and all you ever need to do is like your hands in your face. You can put this on where you're still actively hiking. You don't need to pause, take your trekking poles off and use both your hands. You can just like rub it on your face. This is usually sold as like a backcountry oh. ski thing or like a skiing thing, but it's just as useful for hiking. You don't have to pause to put fresh sunscreen on. I actually have sunscreen somewhere too. In my med bag. Oh yeah, you didn't see that in there. I have Benadryl, anti-bite cream, that yeah. sunscreen-ish, and an extra O-ring. Don't know where it is. That's and I had a knife at some point too, and I couldn't find it. All I found was trash in my hip pockets. Seems what, about right. Where is all my stuff? Who knows? This is all. Um, yeah. And then of course you're gonna want to get deet because we're gonna be going through, as mentioned, black flies, ticks, mosquitoes, every kind of biting horrible insect. Um, off doesn't work. It just doesn't. Med it meditation while you hike naked does. I mean, that could work, mind over matter. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you don't want to meditate, you can just use chemicals instead. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, 30% are higher deep. It's the only thing that works on black flies. Yes. Um, last thing that I carry, this is like super a luxury item, but I found it in a hiker box and I'm not getting rid of it. Sit pad. Did you create the hole on the top? No, this is a different one. It's purposed for a sit pad. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's not, somebody that, sit pad. not somebody that actually cut it up. No, I used to have an old one that he found for me in the trash. It was getting pretty beaten up. And then I found this in a hiker box when I was doing a short section of the AT two years ago. Uh, and I just held onto it until That's it became useful. Smart. My ass hurts every single day on trail. It's also really nice if you're camping somewhere cold or like really rocky. If you don't have a plushy sleeping bag like ours, you can slide it underneath your hip and give yourself a little bit more warmth. You can use it to spread out on the floor of your tent if you get stuck in bad weather and have to cook in your tent. You don't mm -hmm. want to be putting your stove directly onto a nylon floor. Put That's it on smart. top of this guy. I don't do that with tents. Really useful. No. Um, last thing and coolest Ooh. thing this year, I'm actually doing trekking poles. I've left trekking poles on top of mountains knowing the downhill is going to be super steep and screeish. I'll leave like one in the middle of the trail knowing Magpie will need it. And then she'll get to camp and be like, oh, Thanks that was for the perfect. Trekking pole. Yeah. And I keep telling her, I'm like, use trekking poles. Use use tre I them. hate carrying trekking poles. And I finally found these guys, which solved that problem for me. So these are the distance FLZ poles from Black Diamond. Um, distance FLZ poles from Black Diamond. It sounds like gibberish. I work at a gear store. <laughs> 
Um, so for, the nice for thing all about the these guys is they pack know. down to, I believe it's just a little bit over 11 inches. They're super lightweight, uh, full aluminum still too, so they're not ha gonna have the same like torsional loading problems as carbon. I can get my measuring tape out to check. <laughs> <laughs> and the cool thing is, they're uh -oh, both adjustable, and they just ploy super fast. Oop, I didn't mean to poke you with uh -oh, it. Oh, I, I knew it was coming. Okay. Oh, so that okay. was supposed to be a little bit more seamless. <laughs> but they lock out, and then you can still adjust the length here. So you're not stuck with a single action pull. I actually like saw a version of these that are meant for split boarding, and I was like, ooh, I think that solves my trekking pole problem. Ooh, I like that. Uh, Because I hate carrying ooh, trekking poles. Oh, sound. I'm sorry, baby. Oh. I hate carrying trekking poles when I don't need them because it stops me from being able to eat and walk at the same time and use my hands for other stuff. They've watched my ventriloquist while I try to chew a muffin, film, and hold check and pulls at the same time. I watched that too. It's quite entertaining, <laughs> I will say. Ooh, there so we go. these guys fit in my hip pocket. I don't have to carry them if I don't want to, that but nice. I can use them when I need to. And they're super lightweight. So good job, Outdoor Industry. Kudos for this. No kudos for the non-women version of this. So it washes out. And no kudos for the beta version of the jacket. <laughs> it's a great jacket, actually. It just needs a different name. Okay. Well, maybe the jacket could be beta, but the person in the jacket could be... Whatever makes you feel good, babe. I don't know how that... No, what was the other jacket called? Alpha. Got her to finish the sentence for me. Yes! Oh, it felt good! I've been High five! <laughs> she doesn't like being tricked. <laughs> You don't like being tricked, do you? <laughs> Very tricky. Oh, uh, I gotta stop. Biggest piece of gear, best piece of gear. Patrick the Rock is coming with us. Yeah, of course he's coming with us. He's coming with us, he's been with us for... He's been with you since the AT, right? No, since the CDT. Okay. Baskets found us. Shout out Baskets. Um, CDT, been with me all this year, and it's gonna complete the NCT with us. Another shared thing, we touched on this. Yeah, we're gonna use that guy. You'll see all the links. You yeah. want to just quickly go through our pack and the stuff on the outside? Well, I mean, you are using your old standard uh, Hyperlight Mountain Gear pack. HMG, Sawyer. So I do one, I don't do a liter and a half. Usually it's a liter of smart water or a thick plastic bottle, and then a liter of a Gatorade bottle. So I have the tall and skinny one, and then the fat, ch uh, use a different word, fat chubby one. <laughs> um, because this one with drink mix, like Mio and stuff, it's easier for me to monkey it out of my bag. And that's the outside of the bag, folks. Um, some of this stuff goes on the outside. And hip pockets, put crap in there, too. Yeah. You're so specific and organized. <laughs> I know. It's, again, if you watch this video, you'll see what we actually carry, but... I'm actually going for a new pack this year. Ooh. I'm always every single time i buy a new pack i'm like this is it this is the one this is the perfect pack for me i'm never half to gonna buy a new pack again and then either it breaks it turns out i hate it or i do something dumb like forgetting to order it with a hip belt not realizing that it's an integrated hip belt that i need to order in the first place when was this gdt yeah last year oh, I remember. when i had to hack together my stupid hip belt I and then it looked like i didn't know how to fit a pack properly on my body in the videos i remember daily. which i do know how to fit a pack properly don't worry do you it didn't look like it rude uh, <laughs> So, I'm sticking, hopefully for the last time ever, I'm going to invest in this new pack. I'm sticking with ULA. I thought about getting the CDT again, um, but because it's a longer hike and because I want this to be like the last one that I ever buy, considering what a variety of packs I already have in my house, I decided I wanted to get something that was maybe a little built, overbuilt for this hike just because I wanted to fill a niche in my array of packs. So this guy is the ULA Ohm. So instead of, it's still an ultralight pack, but instead of being truly frameless, it has carbon fiber stays, which means that it can still have load lifters. So if I ever have to do like a 10 day carry with this guy, it's gonna be a lot more comfortable than if I was using a pack that was truly frameless, but it's removable. So are you waiting for me to stop talking? No, 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 I'm fine with that. I was just blow fishing to entertain. Okay. Um, and then the other reason, I mean, I love ULA because they make really well, good quality still nylon packs which I prefer over Dyneema, even though it's not waterproof, just because it has a little bit more abrasion resistance, and it's not so crinkly and loud when you're walking oh, with like it. the crinkle factor. You can train your brain to try to 
push out the crinkle factor. I mean, that's another thing that people don't consider very much when they're buying new stuff for trail. It's annoying. <laughs> The it's crinkly very noise of the annoying. cubic fiber, yeah. it's an excellent material, Dyneema, but it's so loud. And if that's going to some, be something that you're listening to all day, every day, with every step you take, a squeaky, car, uh, a squeaky Dyneema pack can really get on your nerves. It's like a quality of life issue on trail. So, <laughs> a quality of life. It is. It My life you. quality is an F right now. I just can't get Great rid of the pack. Squeak. Bad noise. Yeah. The noise is going to drive you nuts. Mm -hmm. Like... Save your sanity, you get a couple extra grams to make it out of Silm Island. Um, and then the other thing that I really love about ULA is their hip belts. Chonky as, as hell. They are very chonky. They got the double uh, the double lacing strategy, which makes them way better for women and other people with hips or any kind of like non-normative, not like snow hips dude hips oh. going on. Oh, wait, 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 wait. Let's go back to this. It's snow hips? No hips. I think I got the hips that don't lie. I'm just saying. If you don't have like very narrow hips, these fit better because you can adjust both the upper circumference and the lower circumference of the pack so you can snug it into whatever part of your body needs more support. And the wider hip belt means that it doesn't dig into your belly. Um, and the pockets are super deep. I can get so much stuff in here. Like an entire day's worth of snacks I can fit into these pockets. They look deep too. They're excellent. Mm. So big fan. And then I've just got a little like old gossamer gear uh, chest pocket on here because it was one that I had at home and it's fine. That's all I have to say about that. I'm starting to think, as I listen to her talk about gear, that you can actually be more comfortable if you do correct gear choices. If you think about what you need on trail, and like put yourself in the position of where you're going to be you on trail, lost, what you're going to want. You already lost me again. Oh, where and I said think. Oh, no, not there. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe there. <laughs> consider the needs and what is going to make you the most comfortable when hiking then yeah you can get gear that'll suit your preferences like right off the bat but i mean i also spend tons of money iterating gear yeah i get a new pack every year hopefully not next year but like you know i've i've swapped out a bunch of sleeping bags i've swapped out a bunch of sleeping mats i'm always playing with my setup to try to get it more comfortable this guy just buys something and he's like yeah it's fine it works i'm good i miss my crotchless pair of drawers that i had for close to three thousand miles literally all they had was a little seam and then some of the front line fabric everything else was gone and it was the piece they resist on it sounds favorite. like what you really want is a jock strap <laughs> it does sound like i want that i don't though <laughs> no, you, you <laughs> want yours. ripped up ripped up underwear. yeah i want to be able to push it to that point that it's just mine now mm. okay your choices differ here a little bit yeah, they certainly do. We can make we can cut this up and make it all holy. Let's not. This was like eight hundred bucks. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That but I mean, that's the thing with gear, though, is that you can spend so much time and effort and money getting like the latest, coolest thing, but ultimately, the thing that is going to give you the most benefit is the thing that you're comfortable using. Yes. You know, it's not going to make or break your hike. I mean, packs might, but it's not going to make or break your hike like exactly which puffy jacket you're using if it's like the cool kid ghost whisper or not as long as it's something that works for you and is going to like function as intended on trail even if it's not the best the lightest the shiniest the newest it's still going to do its job you're still going to be able to get through the trail or even if its name makes you hurt in your soul yeah that too yes i wanted to give a huge shout out to janice um for hooking us up with the patches and stickers and just a lot of cool stuff awesome lady thank you so much really cool awesome Catch. <laughs> All, right. All right. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Bye.